Hey, what's going on everyone? RCA4 here, like always. Thanks for watching. Well, my friends, back here with the HG Humvee, which is the P408. And in this video, I want to take a more in-depth look at the truck, take the body shell off, and take a look at the chassis along with electronics. The chassis definitely needs to be shown off, and when I looked at it, I was like, wow, this thing needs to be filmed because it's an amazing uh, piece of work. The way that HG captured all the features of a Humvee, what makes a Humvee, if that made any kind of sense whatsoever. But they did a truly great job at designing this truck and making it just like a Humvee. So let's go ahead and get the body shell off and take a closer look at all this stuff, right? All right, so to remove the body shell, there are a total of eight screws. Six of the screws are the main screws that attach to the body to the chassis, and there's two small screws that attaches the exhaust clamp to the body, and you have to you know, undo those. Now, I've gone ahead and undone all the screws, but it's very simple to do. And when you pull off the body shell, you want to be careful because there is an extension cord that goes from the ESC to back here to the battery box where the battery is located at. So it's got this extension cord. So it has a male uh, Dean's end and then it has a female Dean's end. So one plugs into the ESC, the other plugs into the battery. So yeah. All right. So when you pull it off, be careful with that because it will be attached to the ESC. Now I've gone ahead and detached it anyway. Now the sweet thing about this right here is that the body shell comes off with everything attached. There's no taking the body shell off and then taking the interior off. It all is attached in one piece. So that's really nice. So look at the bottom here. There's your Dean's plug. Wire goes all the way back. Now I really like how HG put these little uh, hook clamps right there to keep the wire from, you know, from dangling and stuff like that. That was a nice idea that they did. And it's, you see, now the body has a little bit of a weight, but not too much, but it has some weight, you know, so it makes any sense right there. But I do like the fact that the whole interior and all that is right on the body shell. You don't have to take, you know, take the, uh, the interior off and all that stuff. It's all built in. And plus with this body shell, everything is removable. You can move the doors, the top, um, yeah, the top, the mirrors, uh, you, you can remove everything off this thing. You can take the seats out in a visual. So, yeah. So let's put that to the side and get to the chassis itself. So here is the chassis, my friends. Pretty nice, actually. Very heavy. This is where a lot of the weight's at because it is a metal chassis. Uh, the transmission is metal. Pretty much everything on the truck is pretty much metal or aluminum or alloy, I think it is. So let me bring the camera a little closer so we can get a good, fairly look at the truck, all right? All right, my friends. So here is the chassis, and I have to say it's a well-built chassis, very solid. Everything on the chassis is straight-up metal or alloyed metal. So kind of gives you an idea. This is where a lot of the weight of the truck is at. So let's talk about the electronics here. This is something that a lot of people really want to talk about on the electronics. All right. So we have our 16 channel receiver right here. Pretty lengthy and long receiver. I'm actually going to be doing away with all the electronics here and put in some, you know, some better electronics. Not saying that these electronics suck or anything. I'm just saying that I have my preferred choice that I would like to use. So I'll be putting in my FlySky receiver, which is a six channel receiver. It's going to be half the size of this thing, which will give me a lot more room under the hood to work with. So if I want to add that sound unit or light kit, I can do so. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so let's try not to drop the camera here. All right. So let's talk about the ESC here. This uh, ESC has no name on it. So don't know who actually makes this ESC. It is 160 amp ESC. LiPo compatible up to a two cell LiPo, so 7.4 volts is all this thing can handle. Don't know if it could handle three or so. It does have a built in uh, BEC in it at five volts, I think, or five or six volts it is. It also has two different modes. It has a race mode and a crawl mode. I think the race mode, you only have forward 
maybe break, but I'm not exactly sure. You can't go reverse. Now in crawl mode, you have the forward, backwards, and brake. Now I do not know if this ESC does have a drag brake. When I tested out here in the RC room, it didn't feel like it had a drag brake whatsoever. So you might want to look at getting an ESC that has a drag brake in it. Uh, because I don't think this one really does have one. And I do not know if this thing is actually waterproof or not. From just looking at it, I don't think none of the electronics are actually waterproof at all. Because uh, if it was, this receiver wouldn't be sitting plain out. You know, be in a box and stuff. So that's kind of telling me that none of this is waterproof at all. So our uh, motor right here is a 550 brush cam motor. It doesn't say what turn it motor is or what pinion gear is on it. It just says 550 brush motor. Uh, so yeah, so don't really know too much about it. That might be another thing that's going to get out of the truck. I'm probably going to be putting in a uh, an RC4 drive 55 turn motor in there because I really love 55s in my trail trucks. They do an awesome job. Take a look at the servo because a lot of people want to see that. Now the servo is actually kind of <laughs> upside down. And uh, let's see if we can get the camera to focus on it. There you go. So just a little 9 gram servo. It doesn't really say torque wise. You might see it. I don't. But uh, just a really you know basic 9 gram servo which is going to be taken out here soon. <laughs> All right. So... Let's take a trip back here. So this is the transmission for the Humvee here. This is a two-speed transmission. So you have a high gear and a low gear. And you also have a neutral gear as well. So if you want to pop it up and pop it out and rev it in you know, neutral there, rev up the motor a little bit. I don't know why you want to do it. But if you want to do it, you can do it. Right here is the servo for the two-speed. Another micro servo, 9 gram, uh, with a plastic uh, servo horn and the spring going back to the transmission. So that engages our two-speed and high gear. So, yeah. Um, take a little closer look <clears throat> at it like this. Let's we'll zoom the camera out so we can get a better look. So we got our exhaust pipe right there, which is running underneath straight up to the motor where it would be at on a Humvee. And it comes out to the side. Here's this little bracket that I was talking about when you remove the body shell. That was one of the things that attaches to the body shell. So you just got to take those two screws out. Um, <clears throat> take a look underneath it all. As you can see, again, very nice. Very well built. Very solid. Let's see. <clears throat> so yeah. So we got these little plastic covers here. That's where the gas tank would be at. Uh, a couple little shields for the uh, transmission and uh, the servo and stuff like that. <clears throat> One of the things that I have noticed about these little plastic covers here, as you can see right down here, <clears throat> they're pretty much hollow. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, what I'm thinking is that there's going to be a lot of uh, dirt and mud and water can get up in there and collect. So you might want to drill a couple holes in there to... Get that water, get that mud out of the uh, little covers here. So that's one of the things that I'm going to be doing because I know <clears throat> that this truck is actually going to catch a lot of dirt and sand and stuff like that. So it'll be a much easier way to clean the truck when you need to do so. <clears throat> so take a look back here. One of the things I did not mention out is the tow hitch here. You actually have a fully functioned tow hitch. So that is pretty awesome. All right, so... I'm trying not to use that word awesome in this video. <laughs> All right. Now, the vehicle comes in uh, open discs, so that is a bummer. But you can lock the differentials. They do give you the parts to lock the differentials. And to lock the differentials is right up here. Uh, you probably can't see it, but let me get a light so we can see it. So... Right up in there is a little, uh, I'm trying to get it, right right there where my thumb is at, is a little, uh, little peg thing that you pull out and you, you take two little grub screws and you put right there in the uh, differentials and that locks them up. 
Now, if HG could come up with a way for the mate the truck where you can do it from the remote, that would have been much sweeter. So, you think Traxxas is TRX4 has it, and their trucks are about five hundred dollars. These trucks are about five hundred dollars. You know, I don't see why they couldn't figure a way out of doing that. They did figure a way out of doing the two-speed servo or two-p <laughs> two-speed transmission. So why couldn't they do a uh, you know locking disc by the controller? That's one thing they could have done with it. But overall, the truck looks fantastic, my friends. Very well built. They did you know, just an awesome job at uh, catching <clears throat> all the factors of a Humvee, of what a Humvee would have. They did a great job. So, you know, shout out to them for doing a great job at, you know, really designing a very, very cool truck. And I still can't wait to get this out there in the trails and do some crawling with it. <clears throat> Nothing hardcore, but uh, yeah. All right, my friends, so that is the video on the chassis of the HG Humvee P408, <laughs> if you guys want to know. All right, my friends, so if you guys got any questions about the truck, comment down below. I'll be happy to answer any questions I possibly can of where you can get parts from. I know a place where you can get the parts now, <clears throat> and that's for everything on the vehicle. All right, my friends, so... Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys later.